Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Money Matters Top Tips for Success, where each and every day I bring on new business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and have them share their top tips for success with you. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, moneymatterstoptips.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Curtis Boyd on the line, and he's the founder over at Objection Co. Curtis, welcome to the show. Thanks, Adam, for having me. So I'm excited to get more into what you're doing over at Objection Co. I mean, uh, fraud detection um, software, I mean, it's, it's, it's a big deal, and a lot of people listening are interested in that. So I, I want to get more into that. But before we do, let's get a little bit further into your background. So how did you get started in your career as an entrepreneur? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, my uh, entrepreneur story starts when uh, I was about to uh, graduate from nursing school. Um, I used to be a student nurse. Um, at the last part of nursing school, you have a preceptorship where you uh, you go and you work on uh, in a clinical unit at a hospital. And while I was there, I ran into a cosmetic surgeon, and he was doing a consult on a facial reconstruction and stuff. So we we chatted for a few days, and he had some complaints about a bad review that was just written for his private practice, and I had some complaints about my student loans. At the, at the last day we, we kind of talked on the unit, he he kind of muttered on, you know, saying that he would um, pay for my student loans if uh, I would figure out how to remove this bad review. And I didn't take him very seriously. You know, I was like, I owe $30,000. He's like, yeah, that's not a problem. Um, I ended up calling his office uh, the next day to follow up with him if he was to take him up on his offer if he was serious. The office manager was like, hold on, I found whatever, let me find out. So she finds out, and the doctor is like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Um, he says he lost 11 consults that week. His consults, you know, he charges ten to $15,000 for surgery, elective surgery. He had already lost over $100,000 to this bad review. And uh, so I said, okay, yeah, you'll do it, I'll do it. I'm, I'm going to go figure this out. I ended up purchasing plane tickets that weekend to San Francisco to see if I could meet with someone who would uh, try and get this review removed. Because I, I, you know, before I, I bought the tickets, I tried myself. I went online, I clicked around, I sent emails, nothing worked. So I ended up taking more of an initiative. I ended up buying plane tickets to San Francisco to see if I could just meet someone who worked at that company who would be willing to tell me how to get this done, how to accomplish this. Um, so local bars, coffee shops, actual bars, I ended up meeting... <laughs> Yeah, I just floated around and asked questions. I I, I ended up uh, meeting someone who is now currently uh, a vice president at the company, and they used to work in the review removal department, and um, they sat down with me for about an hour and line by line showed me what I needed to do to get an unfair or illegitimate review removed. And I went back home. I flew home. I uh, two days later, I got the review removed. And after the day after that, I had a thirty thousand dollar check in my hand. And at that day, I realized that I could solve a very expensive problem for business owners. Um, not just an expensive problem, but a a problem that really mattered to um, not just not just that business owner, but lots of business owners. This particular physician happened to be on the board of directors at the entire hospital. Um, so before I graduated from nursing school, I ended up having the entire physician network as customers. He told me how much I should charge. He set me up with this, you know, a CPA and a bookkeeper and, you know, how to set up an EIN and stuff. And so by the time I graduated nursing school, I already had about 800 physician customers. Um, one physician network turned into six or seven, and that was about six and a half years ago. <laughs> What an amazing story. Oh, my gosh. That's great. And I can just picture you just, you said you floated around, you went to some coffee shops, went to bars, wherever. You're just like, how do I get the review removed? I love that's, your story. And right. I can see it. I'm picturing it. That's an adventure. Um, no, that's awesome. So that being said, obviously, you're, you're um, quite, quite, a, um, quite a ways away from that very first review and that very first endeavor. Um, that being said, there's some younger entrepreneurs that maybe haven't taken that plane ride or haven't done that thing that forces them to go over the edge into entrepreneurship. Um, but they're thinking about it and they're on the sidelines. Uh, what kind of advice would you give to that newbie that's out there um, considering getting started but just hasn't really pulled the trigger yet? 
Holy moly. Opportunity awaits you. There is so much opportunity in today's market. It it comes down to what do you what do you really want to do in order like what sacrifices are you willing to make to, you know, to to get or gain the skills you need to do or to, you know, be in front of the right person. Um it it's for me, I it was the best thing that ever happened to me when I when I chose to no longer, you know, uh be a you know, be a student nurse and, and, you know, spend all that time in the hospital and to actually go into entrepreneurship. It's certainly, it's certainly terrifying, but it's, it's well worth it um, financially. <laughs> I mean, without, a, without any question. Uh, for so, newer, yeah, for newer entrepreneurs, I, I, I just, you know, um, I would definitely give my, uh, just let them know, just re- reassure them that, you know, there's so much opportunity out there. It's just finding a niche and creating a market for yourself and, and then, you know, actually just keep pushing to just keep to just keep uh, growing and, and to I love uh, it. Yeah. That's awesome. Um let's uh let's switch it up a bit, Curtis. I wanna get into what you're doing over at Objection Co. So first tell us a little bit more about the company, please. Yeah, so uh a, a few years ago I realized that AI is about to change the world. <laughs> and uh um, we're already starting to see evidence of that, but uh, I also realized that uh, I could um, replace myself with a computer. Uh, the service that we provide, which is um, removing illegitimate reviews, I realized a computer could do it, um, and no one else is going to program a computer how to do it, so it may as well be me, right? So uh, I ended up going back to school. Um, currently, I'm spinning up uh, learning uh, AI and machine learning at uh, uh, MIT, which is pretty exciting, studying under Professor Shaw, which I'm extremely uh, grateful for. And uh, we now use artificial intelligence to identify fraudulent reviews, illegitimate reviews that can be removed, um, and then disputing them on on uh, behalf of the business that we you know that we represent. So, Objection Co. is the the next evolution of my reputation business. Um, I wanted to be omnipotent, so to speak. I wanted to replace myself so that um, I could, you know, use the use the same techniques that I use manually, but in a in a more scalable way. So, me personally, I can only look at a few hundred accounts a day. That's just because of my my ability to do so. I have to physically click on each URL, check the reviews, and I realize that a computer do it. Uh, now our computer checks, you know hundreds of thousands of listings each day without without a sweat. It's it's almost second nature to, to you know, for this programming. So really, really excited about the the my me not having to check so many listings every day. Now we use software to uh, accomplish uh detection, which is which is really exciting. The only ones that I'm aware of that currently do this. We're the only people on on this planet that use software that use artificial intelligence to scan views for legitimacy to see if they um, qualify for removal. That's awesome. And are and so in terms of the type of clients you do this for, I know you mentioned you're you obviously have a very large um doctor base and you work heavily in that niche. Do you work in other um with other type of clients, other type of businesses? Like give us a little bit more of the scope of the type of clients. If somebody's listening right now, who's the right type of person that should be reaching out? Because I know there's a big problem and a lot of people um need this type of service. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. I mean anyone who doesn't want to just sit there and let this bad review affect them should should contact us. Um, you know, the industries where we see the most amount of success, um, because we have the most amount of customers, but industries where we see the highest amount of success um, is are the medical fields, you know, physicians. Um, uh, it's also in uh, uh, with restaurants, hotels, um, home service industries for us are we get a tremendous amount of results. Um, HVAC companies, plumbers, uh, contractors, roofers, solar installation, all these types of companies. You, what we'll notice is that um, when the price point of your product or service goes up, reviews become more important. People are going to research you before they spend money with you because because of, of that. The price is you know, it's a little bit higher. They want to do a little bit more due diligence. And so any business where they're about to spend more than 2500 bucks, reviews are extremely important. I mean, they're extremely important even for restaurants where a plate of food is only $10, but it really becomes more important when the when the price tag um, goes up. So 
you know, if you're, if, if you're a business um, and you have unfair reviews, you know, untruthful customers, competitors, ex-employees, people have written you bad reviews, or people you don't know who have written you bad reviews, fraudulent reviews, you should be contacting us so that we can analyze these reviews. We have a software that will literally read these reviews, analyze the profiles, and give you evidence you need to dispute it. Whether we dispute it for you or whether you dispute it for yourself, um, you need to get these disputed because not all bad reviews can be removed, but every bad review can be disputed, which is which you know is 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 great, and you should be disputing them, especially if they're illegitimate. That's awesome. So, Curtis, if somebody is listening to this and they are in that situation, what's the best way for them to reach out and learn more about Objection Co.? Yeah, if you go to our website, objection.co, we're happy to give you a free complimentary report with all your reviews. We'll analyze them, let you know, you know, out of the 100, maybe these 20 can be removed in the next two or three weeks. Um, we're happy to, you know, just provide consulting and, and let you know what, what you can take, what steps you can take on your own, whether or not you work with us. That's perfect. Um, well, Curtis, really appreciate you coming on the show today and uh, sharing more about your background and all the great work you're doing at Objection Co. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes Store, uh, do all those great things we do to support our podcasters. I really do appreciate it. And Curtis, thanks again for coming on the show.